This is my first fully custom designed keyboard and also my first try to understand how split keyboards are built properly. I was trying to build a custom keyboard with as little as possible pre-built parts in it and also see if I can design everything just how I would like without using templates from other people. But a bit of background first. The halves can be attached in different ways to another. The first way is direct wiring, which is basically a normal keyboard with a long cable in the middle. This design only has one controller, and it's how I built my first keyboard. But you need to have enough data lanes for the columns and rows to connect, which might be a problem. Last time I used an HDMI cable, which gave me 14 data lines. This is also a hacky approach. 2 out of 10 would not recommend. You could also use an I.O. expander, which just gives you more ports for your microcontroller. These connect over I2C, so you only need two data lines and two power lines, which makes it possible to use any USB or TRRS cable. Like with the previous way, this only works if you connect the main half to the computer, as the other doesn't have any logic in it. Now the cool version, using two separate microcontrollers that connect over I2C, as you can now plug in each half as a standalone keyboard for things like gaming. So now I would need to design my split keyboard layout. I wanted something simple, similar to how the Plank keyboard is built, but easier for traveling with more ergonomic benefits, as my wrist started hurting from using the keyboard which has my hands way too close together. I also wanted a very minimal version of the thumb cluster, as it's very handy for switching layers. Also, swapping between my ErgoDox and this keyboard would be way easier if they have at least the thumb area similar. As this is a portable keyboard, I wanted the split version to attach the halves together so that it can fit on a tiny desk. This way it still looks similar to the plank keyboard, just with the added thumb buttons. I created some space at the sides for the two controllers to fit in. I wanted it to be a pretty flat layout, so I didn't want to layer the controllers under the keys. Then I measured the dimensions of my key switches. I chose the Kyle Low Profile Heavy Burnt Orange. These are tactile switches and are pretty silent, and with the 70 grams activation force, it helps with reducing accidental key presses from searching for the home row on these low profile keys. Then I built a frame with holes for the keys to pressure fit in, with a simple box design, as I didn't want to overcomplicate my first keyboard build. The only fancy thing are the holes for the magnets. This is still one of the most satisfying parts of this build, as the magnets snap the keyboard nicely together. For the wiring, you just need to know that your keyboard in the end looks like a grid to the controller, and that on the side of the keys there's a diode that should always face in the same direction. This way you can press multiple keys at once, while the keyboard scans for key presses. I just wired the keyboard symmetrically, so I just need to plan out half of it. After wiring up the rows and columns, you just need to write down which row and which column you connect to each pin on the microcontroller, so we can choose the mirrored pins on the other half. Then I connect the TRRS jack to the I2C pin. By the way, I've read somewhere that some people had issues with hot plugging the keyboard halves together, and then they need to reset the keyboard by unplugging and replugging the USB cable. I've never had any issues with that on my keyboard. If I had known this works so good, I might even have added pins next to the magnets so I can use it in plank mode without any additional cables. I first planned the modifier row at the bottom, similar how I configured my plank keyboard. But I just changed it so that the top row is a number row, and I used tap and hold modifiers. These now finally work fantastically, after I got a notice on how to configure them correctly. There's an article linked in the description. Now they even work for fast typing speeds, which is just insanely comfortable. After everything is wired up, you just need to flash the controller with the configured QMK firmware. I got some inspiration from the LED split keyboard layout. As it's a pretty simple keyboard, I just added six keys below that for my thumb cluster. I then set my metrics and column pins, configured tap and hold modifier settings, and added my custom key map to it with Neo2 and tap and hold modifiers. The buttons in the center toggle the layer modes, and the keys next to it are either backspace or space. I also added a swap hands button on the top right corner of each keyboard. For the cost breakdown, this thing cost 53 euros in total, plus 13 hours to 3D print. But most of the cost were the two Pro Micro microcontrollers, which I just couldn't get any cheaper. But I got my keycaps pretty cheap from Mastrop, with only 14 euros for all used keys. 
That said, I think it's a very good solution to get yourself a not super overpriced keyboard. 3D printing is super cheap, and so there's room to spare for some nicer keycaps and switches, which are the things that matter in the end. The only thing I would change for the next version is adding another column to the inside, or at least one key, as that's the spot on the ergodox I use for the enter key, and switching gets confusing sometimes. Also, the thumb plug would need to be moved to the center by one key as well. The outer keys are not that comfortable to reach. I would also try to rotate the thumb block at least a bit. Also, contoured keys are a huge thing. I only noticed that after switching back and forth from my ergodox to this keyboard. This just means that the upper and lower keys on the keyboard are tilted a bit. This makes pressing keys so much more comfortable as you're not moving that far to reach them. But all these additions would cause the keyboard to get a more complex shape or be harder to transport. So I'm pretty happy with the result right now. That's why I set goals for your project at the start. You can grab a copy of the keyboard layout and the keyboard 3D print files in the description. Thanks a lot for watching.